This is Drone Tag. It's the first FAA approved device for remote ID. It's huge. Eh, well, that's the box. It's actually a little bit smaller inside. There she be. And we're here on the runway of Cornelia Fort Airport to put this through its paces. This is already approved in the UK and it was recently approved here in the United States. It does have an FAA certificate of compliance. There's a link in the description if you want to see what that looks like. It's super fun because it's the government. Just a quick side note, we know you hate remote ID. I hate remote ID. The company that made the drone tag didn't invent remote ID. It's like this, if I kick you in the nuts, Oh my nuts! Then you wouldn't get mad at the shoe company, right? It's not the shoe company's fault, but Remote ID is a kick in the nuts to the drone community. How much does it weigh? 32 grams. So we're going to try this on two drones. One is a GPS drone, the Mini 3, and we're going to put it here. Why? Because the top of the Mini 3 is sloped, and the GPS unit is right here. If you took the top off, the GPS unit would be right where these legs intersect, and you don't want to block that with another GPS unit. And we're going to slap it on an FPV quad, see if it can keep up. Do you think it'll be able to handle it, Keith? Oh, we'll find out. The Velcro that comes with it, I don't know if I trust it. I mean, it seems like it's on there, but I'm going to use some gaffer's tape just to be safe. Starting the drone tag app. Where are we? We are here at this defunct airport. I already have chosen my Mini as the one that this is going to track. And the lights start dancing. Do you see the dancing lights? So how does this work, Keith? It uh, goes from the drone tag to space, then to a substation in Alaska, back around through China, of course, because they have to get all the information, then back to your receiver, into your phone, through your pacemaker, back out into the app for the drone tag, right? Poopy clouds. No, actually, how does it work? Clouds. Clouds? Clouds. There's oh. a cloud. There's a drone tag cloud? There's a cloud. So we are using uh, Bluetooth technology for the broadcasting. And the main reason is that uh, while we were developing this solution, we found out that the Wi-Fi often interferes with the C2 link. So that's something we didn't want to risk. So we went with the Bluetooth technology. OK, typically Bluetooth doesn't have that great a range. How did you manage to overcome that? So that's correct, because people are always used to the devices that they have point-to-point -point communication. So you are using Bluetooth mouse, uh, Bluetooth headphones, and they are always working on like uh, five meters. And when you are going to the next room, it gets lost. But when you are just listening the broadcast, so you are just listening the signal, you are not sending something from the phone back, then you can get into some, let's say, pretty impressive range. So with our device, we have tested over two miles from drone to smartphone, but just listening the broadcast. And we are not speaking about any kind of, let's say, huge amount of power radiated. So the device uses just six milliwatts of power to radiate uh, the surrounding. It's good for part 107 pilots. If you want to comply once this law goes into effect, uh, drones will not be grandfathered in, you know, like old cars that use leaded gas. Not like that. Sorry. So if I zoom in on here, it'll show all the little moves that I made. Wow, you really have to zoom in. Look, it's pretty accurate. It really is. I've been watching and yeah, every move you've made, I've seen. Oh made. boy, I hope there's no Karens that know about this app. I'm out enjoying the day, getting some exercise. I heard there's a Karen nearby. There's a deer right there. Can you see the deer? on the other side of the fence. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that does look like a Karen. Wait, what the hell's that noise? What the? There's a deer right there. Look at this. This guy's ruining my shot. Wait a minute. I'm going to pull up on my phone here this wonderful app. I can be able to find this idiot. So if it updates every whatever millisecond, then it should be able to keep up with the FPV quad. See the little? Purple teardrop. There he is. Let's go have a few words with him. Hi, little me. Hello, friend. What have you been up to? Spying on Karens, have you? Hey. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Us? Yeah. We're just spying on people with a drone. I'm out here 
filming this gorgeous deer over here. Yeah. And you scare it off with your stupid drone. How did you find us? I got this app right here. Oh, you have the Karen app. A Karen app? Oh. I'm not a Karen. Do you need to speak with our manager? What's the matter with you? Here, you gotta see these idiots. Right here. Look at this. Aw. It's okay, okay, Karen. I got you on this app, dude. I know you did. And you know what that app did, Karen? It brought us together. You get to meet so many new people just flying your drone. I was filming a deer over there. I know, Karen. I know. It's gonna be all right. Get your own drone. Don't be jealous. You're a jerk. I'm calling the cops. How is it able to tell where we are? Like if there was a Karen that wanted to find us. How does it, how does it doing that? So if we get into the category which we try to fit in, which is broadcast remote ID module as defined by DFA. So we only have the takeoff location available. So if you would go with a standard remote ID, ID approach, that's the one uh, where the remote ID is already integrated inside the drone then you are getting real-time position updates about the pilot because you get the position of the ground station. Ah. But for the broadcast remote ID module, there is always just a takeoff position. So once you take off and move one, uh, one mile, then uh, the position will be off. Okay, is that the way it's always going to be? Because for the broadcast for the broadcast remote modules, it will always be that because it's defined by mm -hmm. the standard, it's defined by the regulation, and the same applies for the standard remote ID. That's why we see people are uh, making riots and uh, want to burn FA because yeah. they are sensible for uh, for let's say uh, broadcasting their position to anyone. There are two apps. There's uh, what I'm calling the Karen app, which is the app that the public would use to find out where the drone is. So far, it won't show where the operator is. It does not show where the control station is located, but it will show exactly where, where the drone is. Just to let you know, we haven't turned off the drone tag this whole time, and we've been filming for a couple hours. Yeah. And the, the battery life on this is what, like 14 hours or 14 something? 14 hours. That's really, really good for its size. Are you watching the Karen app? I'm watching all apps. Okay. 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 Yeah, you're moving. Is it showing that I'm moving? You're moving. Is it drawing a little blue line behind all my movements? Yours is. Mine is not. Oh, the Karen app isn't updating. But my uh, my app actually seems to show your movement better than yours. Well, you have to zoom in. Zoom in on my app. So go in a little closer on yours. Oh right. yeah, there we go. So it there is. You yeah, you're zipping okay. right along. So uh, I've got an altimeter in my OSD and the goggles here. I'm gonna go up to 200 feet because we have a 300 foot ceiling here at this abandoned airport. 200 feet, eh, thereabouts. All right, 250 feet. And then I'm gonna just dive at us. Is it showing uh, the altitude? Did it show Oh, it? Oh, it took a minute to catch up there. It did, okay. It did. Uh, <laughs> what happens if I do a- Okay, I'm showing you going up, you're up. 59.6, you're dropping, dropping, dropping. Oh, oh, oh. Looks like it dropped in increments of 10. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> well, yeah, it's following you real good. Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah, I don't think it missed the beat, Ken. Huh. Your app will tell you where the drone is, but will it tell you where the operator is? At this time, I'm only showing the drone. So you can't tell where I am. I do not know where you would be at in reference to where you're at on the drone. There's something you should see on this. What? Let me, let me close this out and reopen it. When I open it up, we're not in Prague, it's purple, correct? Yeah. That's you. I tap you, boom, I got you and the controller. The okay, quad and so the controller. Okay, so you have to tap the user. Yeah. Oh, look I got at you. that. Do, now you have the I user. I tap the icon. And now you have. And okay. now I have your flight path. Why is this red thing moving all over the place? Look at. Huh? Is yeah. that is the red the red one's the drone? Look at. Yeah, no, the tag's been bouncing around. But this this one, the. Interesting. I wonder what happens. So it's the controller it follows. See, yeah, as you right? as you as you move around. Green is, am I moving the tag? Yeah, yeah, the red one's red moving. Red is the controller. Red is the controller. And you're yeah, because you just moved that oh, way. I'm gonna have to move the controller and see how far. It goes. Uh, now, now you're going back on the blue dot where I'm located, where the All phone's right, located. Let's see. I'll put the controller up here. There you go. 
We'll just move a little further. See, it's, it's see bouncing all over. Is it bouncing on you too? No, it's having a hard time because it's near ground level. That could be, but the controller's always at ground level. Okay, guys, let's see how far this thing will go. <laughs> anyway, Ken's taking a trip down the runway to see just how far he can get with that controller before we lose signal. And we see him bebopping about. Look, I'm, I'm getting just a haphazard little bounce around. What are you getting? Yeah, it's a little haphazardy bounce around. It's not, because he's going on but a straight vector. There's something in motion, and, and it should be following it, it, that It's line. showing him near me right now. You know, if we go with a satellite view, we can see. It, it's showing us in near us, it, not, not, not down the runway. Happened here. He's not going down the runway. Because he went on a straight vector down. Oh, look, look, <laughs> he just went off my screen. You didn't go down the runway. I didn't. No, you went off into the woods. Yeah. Oh. You're still off in the woods. Oh, am I? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know how I like the woods. The device is really something uh, future-proof. It's our flagship, and it's really meant to be used by, let's say, professional pilots, professional drones, weighting uh, kilograms, uh, and not, let's say, FPV pilot. So this is completely different group. We will be approaching differently in terms of price, in terms of size, and even durability. So this is really, let's say, for professional drone pilots that needs the flagship that will always work, has a dual uh, dual system for the remote identification. It's the broadcast one to fulfill the remote ID mandate by the FAA, and it's also the network remote ID part when you want to do some uh, advanced operations. This unit is designed and more oriented towards the professional pilot who might be doing fleet operations and has more than one drone that they look to operate off of a singular device. Mm -hmm. This device can handle all of your fleet. How much is it Keith? 300. Whoa! Really? Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. But the company has stated that they do have a more hobbyist model in the works that they plan on bringing out before September of 2023. And once this all goes into effect, we'll all be relegated to free of zones and f be flying around <laughs> boring places like this. There'll be drone ghettos where we'll all just gather and take a snapshot of the same tree forever. But if you want to comply, once again, if you're 107, you need to get one of these. There is a link in the description. One important question though, sir, does it have a heat sensor on it? You no. know, I just don't think there is one. Oh, good. All right. There we go. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, buh. Are you all right? Why? Because this is saying it's 98.3. That's right, folks. Rock 98.3 WJLI out of Paducah, Kentucky. We can see Karen now on her phone. She has downloaded the app, and she is ready to foil our plan to have fun today. What do you think about that, Karen? You're not allowed to fly here. I thought so. I'm calling the police right Oh, now. yeah, you are. Do you think it can, Keith? I think if you strap it enough, what? Strap it enough. Strap it down. Mm. Here are the two apps. We, the drone tag owners, operators, use the one on the top. That's the drone tag app. The one on the bottom, lovingly from henceforth known as the Karen app, is actually called. Oh. <laughs> Line? Drone scanner. What's it called? Drone scanner. There it is. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> now what camera was recording that? <laughs> it can go past the range of your drone, right? Yes? Well, it stays that it has a range of 1.9 kilometers. Mm-hmm. Then what happens? That's a good question. Uh-huh. Want to find out? Yes. No! We can't see a Mini that far! I can barely see it now! But yes, I can still see it. <laughs>